As a psychiatrist and as an empowerment coach, I find many people in my practices who feel stuck in unhealthy relationships. They're either in some or other form of the unhealthy relationship with their parents, their siblings, their partners, their boyfriends, and they just have this feeling of plusness, of um, being less than, their self-esteem is affected. Uh, they're unable to uh, understand what their own needs are in this relationship. So either they're on the giving side and they feel trained and tired and exhausted, or they engage in this unhealthy emotional roller coaster in such relationships. And many times this all feels very normal to them. They're unable to get out of it. They're unable to understand that why is it that they're feeling like that? Many of them blame themselves. They feel a lot of guilt. They feel they're not capable of having a good relationship. Many of them come to us because of chronic stress, of anxieties, panic attacks, depression, and even other emotional conditions. But after deep exploration, we realize that such individuals have never even developed a concept of what a healthy relationship means because they have been in or raised uh, by parents or in their families of origins. Uh, a healthy relationship has never been modeled. Um, so they just don't know. Uh, and it's only through uh, therapy that they eventually find that, hey, this is not what is right or something isn't right, something doesn't click right. Uh, and uh, a lot of them are able to make that changes and some of them get very scared because it, it takes courage to, to make that change because whatever is familiar feels safe, feels normal, feels okay. And uh, when you want to make that change, that's a little bit scary. But uh, many of them are able to outgrow from those. Uh, some of them leave those relationships. Some of them give that relationship a new meaning. Uh, but definitely once they become aware of what, in, what a healthy relationship means, uh, that is the first step uh, for that change for them or that first step towards empowerment for them. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys what is the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy relationships. There's a lot of content on the internet about what an unhealthy relationship is, what a toxic relationship is, and I encourage you guys to go and watch that, but I know sometimes we can engage in the cycle of watching that content over and over. It kind of plays like a broken record, um, but we still feel stuck. We're unable to make that change. So in today's video, because I love to empower people, I thought I'm going to focus on you, focus on a healthy relationship and what steps you can do, what work you can do uh, as you are done watching this video. My name is Dr. Najman Riaz. I'm a practicing psychiatrist and a certified empowerment coach. Uh, I empower women in workforce, especially healthcare fields and tech. The choices we make in our relationship outside our families of origin depends largely on what sort of relationship we have had growing up with our families of origin, especially our parents. You know, there are a few main things which are very essential to any relationship, be it a relationship with a parent, spouse, friend, a partner, and that is number one, safety, that you should feel safe in a relationship. Number two, should feel heard in a relationship. Your feeling should matter. You should not be feeling dismissed by other person in a relationship. Number three, you should have room to make mistakes or mess up. Number four, healthy boundaries, most important. There should be deep respect for each other's personal space. Number five, when you say no to a repeated request, it should be acknowledged and respected. Number six, you should not be afraid to speak your mind, your opinions, your feelings. Number seven, you should not, you should be able to agree to disagree. Number eight, your goals, your aspirations, your dreams should matter in a relationship and so should the other persons for you. Number nine, there should be a trust in a relationship. 
However, sometimes there can be a breakage of trust due to a mistake made by one party or due to some limitations. But as long as both parties acknowledge it, that mistake has happened and are willing to work on this relationship and rebuilding that trust, then there is a chance that that relationship can grow into a healthy one. And lastly, there should be room for forgiveness on both sides. If we have met these goals of a healthy relationship with adults in our lives, like our parents or other adults in the family of origin, if we have one or two such adults in our families, we have some concept of what a healthy relationship means. And if we have more than two adults, then we're very lucky. But not all of us get lucky. Sometimes we're raised in families where our parents or other adults may be struggling with a mental illness, alcoholism, anger issues, legal issues, or even some chronic disabilities. And at that time, our view of a healthy relationship is distorted. And in such case, we can become vulnerable to ending up in an unhealthy relationship or even in an abusive relationship. And that may feel like a right fit to us, which then puts us at a risk for abuse, depression, anxiety, helplessness, and disempowerment. You know, as they say that we choose our friends, our partners, but we don't choose a family of origin. It's destiny, luck, but it can also be an enormous opportunity for growth, self-reflection, and empowerment. So if you are in your late teens and are you're watching this video, then I would suggest to begin now. If you've been interested in watching content on toxic relationships or unhealthy relationships, that's okay. It's good to be curious, good to gain knowledge, but be aware that sometimes we can catch ourselves watching such content over and over. And yes, it gives us validation of our feelings that, hey, we're not alone. And that can be reassuring because, you know, as humans, we don't like to be alone. But now go one step ahead and scan around yourself, around your family of origin, and see who is that person who meets criteria for being that good role model for you. Who is that person who makes you feel secure, safe, heard, validated, who is accepting of you and keeps your best interest in mind, who's willing to take that extra step to help you in achieving your dreams, your aspirations who refuses to enable your not so good behavior and applauds you for your good behavior, then congratulations, you've been exposed to a healthy relationship. Now keep paying attention to your feelings around those adults in your family of origin. Be mindful or cognizant of, and as well as thankful that, and make this your base for your future relationships. Develop the same rules for your own self when it comes to how you relate to you. Be there for yourself. Forgive yourselves when you mess up. Hold yourself tight. Cherish yourself. Provide new avenues for your dreams and set goals for yourself. Now, if you're a full-blown adult and watching this video and you think that right now you may not be that lucky, maybe you may be struggling in your intimate relationships, maybe you're, you're in an abusive relationships, unfortunately, or maybe you're feeling scared, insecure, intimidated, then begin seeking help through a supportive family member, supportive friend, and start developing a healthy relationship with none other than you. You will notice that things will start falling in place for you. If you're in a violent or abusive relationship, then please don't hesitate to call the National Domestic Abuse Hotline number. Remember, help is just a phone call away. It's not unusual for such folks who are in abusive relationships to feel scared, anxious. Remember, it's okay to feel this way, and it's also okay to call for help. Now, if if you're someone who has just ended an unhealthy relationship and you're watching this video and you're feeling lonely and sad and have this urge to hang out with someone else, you're looking for a new partnership, then that's okay too. However, it's better to take this opportunity of this lone time by being just by yourself. So begin scanning your past relationships and ask yourself, how did you feel around the adults in your family of origin? look deeper and start a journey of knowing more about you. Who are you? What matters to you the most? What do you like? What makes you sad, happy, bored, angry? 
What do you enjoy? What do you stand for? What are your dreams, your aspirations? What are your goals? What do you need from yourself? What do you expect from your intimate partner? How do you want to be treated in your life? Ask, ask, and ask yourself all these questions. If you want, journal your thoughts down and find answers to those questions. If you feel stuck, lonely, then it's okay. Find a compassionate counselor to talk to or talk to a supportive friend. So before we decide to give away our power to some stranger in our life, let's start by finding about who we are. Sometimes simple exercises like these can lead us into living an authentic life and finding relationships which add to our value, which help us grow and take out the best in us. So good luck on your journey to finding yourself and finding the true meaning of how and what a healthy relationship is. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for some more helpful tips on your emotional well-being and empowerment. Take care.